So feeling the breath under your hands and under your chest, welcoming yourself here. And picturing yourself receiving all that you would like to receive. What is it that you long for right now? Maybe there's something that you don't even think you're allowed to ask for. Maybe you don't even know what it is yet. But just picture with the breath that you're receiving enough. You are enough. And you're receiving enough. Letting the sufficiency of this moment be felt by you. Letting the sufficiency of this breath fill you. And then on the exhale, letting yourself notice that you're giving enough. In this moment, you are giving enough. You are receiving enough. You are giving enough. And then notice the sensations in your body, in your heart, in your face. What do you feel? Just notice that. And let it in. When you're ready, you can bring your hands to heart center, a little prayer gesture. But bring your hands to your own heart, giving thanks to yourself for being here. There are a thousand other things you could be doing in this moment, and you chose to be here. There is something in you that said, this is where I need to be right now. Giving thanks to yourself for showing up. And then giving thanks to everyone else who is showing up here. You may not know them. You may never meet them. You may become incredibly close friends with them, and and you don't even know it yet. Regardless, give thanks to the other people that are showing up. It's very hard to have a class if no one shows up. And so I give great gratitude to each of you for showing up right now. I'm going to switch this over to the the way that you only hear me instead of having Q&A. So, All attendees are muted. And then we'll go through these slides here. We've got these, these fun slides that I had fun putting together. You can look at them. You can totally ignore them. If you're on audio only, it is not a problem. I don't think you're going to miss anything. This is more just a friend of mine said, hey, some people are really visual learners, and if it's only audio, you're going to lose us. And I said, okay, I can make some slides then. The first one that we have here is titled Shame, because I've got this whole workshop series that's around shame, vulnerability, scarcity, and joy. Why the heck do we want to talk about shame? When I first heard the word shame in like the present context that I understand it, it was in a TED Talk with Brene Brown. And so in many ways, that TED Talk of Brene's has kicked off this whole piece of work for me. But she kicked it off really slowly because my husband at the time showed me the TED Talk and I said, wow, she looks like a great speaker. It sounds like a really good message, but it's not my thing. It's not shame. And I kind of laugh about that now because (laughs) so is shame. Like I've found in the, oh, it's about three and a half years since that. And I found in that time that actually shame weaves itself through the foundation of every aspect of my life. That realization allowed me to start changing it, allowed me to start noticing when I was in a shame response, noticing and being able to change it. So that's why this workshop is called Shame Resilience, because we can't shame-proof ourselves as long as we care about acceptance and belonging, we are going to experience shame. So the definition here, shame is the intensely painful feeling or experience 
of believing we are flawed and therefore unworthy of acceptance and belonging. Basically, it means there's something about me that makes you unable to love me or accept me. That's shame. Wow. It's a hard one to be with. None of us, none of us want to feel shame. And most of the time, we don't want to talk about it either. It's not something that's easy to talk about in our culture. It's actually easier to talk about a lot of other really hard things like abuse and violence and environmental degradation. Like these things are more acceptable to talk about than shame. Thankfully, the work of Brene Brown is changing that. She has, uh, the, that TED talk I was mentioning has 16 million views. She did another one. It's got four or five million views. That's like 20 million people who are now more able to talk about shame, more able to normalize it in their lives. That helps immensely. And then here we are, the dozen or so of us today, talking about it, going a little deeper. That is a huge part of shame resilience. We'll get to that in a moment. So shame creates feelings of fear, blame, and disconnection. Ouch, as though shame is not enough, we all go into fear, blame, and disconnection when we feel shame as well. It's worth noting that guilt and shame are not synonymous. Guilt can be summed up as, I did something wrong. If I told a lie, I could say, ooh, I told a lie. I can change that behavior. That's guilt. Shame is more like, I am a liar. So the shame is that judgment about self. I am some way that is bad or flawed or unworthy. Guilt is I did something that was flawed, not a good idea, but it's changeable. So guilt has this energy of agency where one can change. Shame has this energy of it's just who I am is or numb or pretend it's not there or bluster. You know, it's very hard to heal shame when we're in it. Okay. For women, we're on the next slide here. For women, shame is a shame web. This is, again, Brene's work. Um, the shame web of different energies pulling on us, telling us who we should be, what we should be, and how we should be. This this image, this idea right here, I mean, I created the image, but the, the idea of the shame web from Brene's work is what actually got me saying, oh, my gosh, it is shame. That is what's going on for me. Because I was listening to Brene, and she said that for women, shame shows up as constantly trying to do everything, be perfect, do everything for everybody succeed and constantly failing and feeling pulled in so many different directions and exhausted and failing all the time. And I went, oh, well, that's me. I didn't think that was shame. She helped connect those two things, those experiences of having the endless to-do list and too many roles, too many hats. So this the definition she has down here, women experience shame when we are entangled in a web of layered, conflicting, and competing social community expectations. For me, those show up as I've got five or six really main expectations I have of myself, and they are social community expectations. The businesswoman, the person who wants to get um, my energy, my purpose out there in the world, wants to be seen, wants to make money, wants to, you know, really engage in the world in a big way. That's one part. The parent, the one who wants to be here taking care of my children, wants to be here for them, wants to homeschool them, help them learn and grow and know that they are safe and cared for. Those two, the businesswoman and the parent, they often feel at odds with each other. I need time to go to work. I need my kids to leave me alone to do that. But I need to be with my kids and connect with them conflict, pulling, the shame web, pulling in different directions. If I honor the businesswoman, I dishonor the parent. If I honor the parent, I dishonor the businesswoman. That's been that uh, push, pull, really uncomfortable place that I've been in with this for a long time, not even knowing that those were two aspects of me and that there was a shame web 
as soon as we start to put words, context around it, then we can have tools for working with it. That's why this work is so exciting to me. So I said I had five or six. We've got the businesswoman and the parent, of the lover, the spouse, the sexual being. Um, and that's a huge part of my nature and who I am, which as soon as I became a parent, I put it on hold in a big way because I didn't see how parent and sexual being could be existing at the same time. I've got uh, my own self-care. That's another one that went on hold. I basically put all of my parts on hold as soon as I became a parent. But self-care went on hold, and she was the first one that I started to bring back um, and that started to really change my life. So we will talk a lot about self-care, practices to come home to yourself and to give yourself that love, that acceptance that you're often looking for from other people. Self-care has been huge for me. But it's also a, an energy in my life that asks for a lot of attention and pulls, pulls me in different directions from the parent, the lover, and the businesswoman. I also have a part that really values friendship and community engagement, volunteering, making my immediate world a better place. And the reason that's tied into friendship for me is it's very much about interpersonal connections. Like that's how I want to make my immediate world a better place. So there's this, this desire to spend time with my friends. It's not, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to have some quality time with them. Like, there's a quantity of time that needs to be invested in friends, and that time takes away from all the other parts. So those five parts are ones that I've become familiar with in the last, oh, year or two. And then just very recently, I realized there's another part. There's a, I could call it a childlike part. It's the part that likes to have fun. And, and it's important, too. So any of these, I call them parts. And when you do work with me, we wind up doing parts work, something from inner empathy, this tool that I really love, where we look at different parts of ourselves. So these different aspects, different energies, I call them parts. And, and we can work with them by talking with them, noticing how they feel, what's going on for them. And as soon as we can start to connect with the needs and feelings of the different parts of ourselves, the shame web starts to unravel. We start to know who we are in a much clearer way and to be able to listen to who we are and the things that are important to us without having to negate something else that is important to us. So I'd be, I'm so looking forward to helping anyone who comes through the longer workshop series with me do that, that work of connecting with their parts and doing the parts work around shame. So the shame web is how shame appears for women. The next slide here is a little bit more about how shame appears for men. Show no weakness. Be great and powerful. For men, shame can be summed up as show no weakness. It's also important to look all powerful and to conceal vulnerability. This is from Brene Brown again in another of her books, Daring Greatly, which is my favorite book of hers. So this is a picture of the Wizard of Oz here on the slide, and it's um, you know, the curtain where the, the little man who's operating the controls is hiding behind the curtain. And you can see Darcy and the lion and the tin man and the scarecrow looking off and, and being kind of awed because they're still looking at this great and powerful Oz image. Um, but really, it's this small, vulnerable man hiding in this tiny little box trying to project an image. And... Um, so shame is definitely experienced by both genders. Brene Brown did a lot of her research on women before she started to work with men. Um, but it's certainly experienced by both genders, but it comes from different triggers often. So for men, it's around feeling weak or feeling like a failure, um, being worried that you're going to get beaten up or something's going to say you're weak. For women, it's about competing expectations and failing to be perfect at everything. This next slide is one of my favorites because it's the image. I mean, obviously, it's not the, the full image because I don't actually think in sort of like PowerPoint graphics. But it is the image that got me started on wanting to do the Year of Joys. And it is the image of shame 
on one side of a stream, actually, and joy on the other. It's more like a big river. Shame on one side, joy on the other. And there's a bridge in between the two. And the bridge in between the two is made up of gratitude, sufficiency, vulnerability, and courage. Those are the things that I'm so excited to help each of us step into. Gratitude. We practiced just a tiny bit of that in the beginning, just giving thanks to yourself for showing up. Sufficiency. You just had to show up. That's enough. Anything else that happens is a total bonus. You showed up. You're here. You're participating. You're saying, yes, this work is valuable to me in some way in my life right now. This is valuable. That's sufficiency. Just showing up. Vulnerability. Letting yourself be seen. Letting your voice be heard. Letting these words that I'm speaking right now penetrate you and resonate with you in some way. That's vulnerability. Throughout the course of the longer workshop, there will be a lot of space for each person to connect with other people in the class. We'll do a lot of partner work. And also there'll be classes where your voice gets heard a lot. There'll be live coaching and there'll be time for sharing of stories and insights and questions. Because shame, when we are in a shame response, we isolate, we get quiet, we get small, we go away, we stop talking, we want to armor ourselves. Vulnerability is the last thing that feels possible or helpful or desirable when we are in a shame response. However, it's absolutely essential for coming out of the shame and feeling joy, connection, love, belonging. So a huge part of the workshop with me is learning how to be vulnerable with people who will hold that energy well with you and will help support you in your vulnerability. Because vulnerability is not just good or bad. It's, you could call it a double-edged sword. You could call it empty of meaning. Vulnerability is something that often led to our greatest shame experiences. When we let ourselves be vulnerable and somebody just got right in there, got right into the soft spot, a lot of times that's when we're children because our our armoring, our protection isn't very sophisticated then. And so it's easy to be hurt, to be shamed when we're children. We're very vulnerable. As we get older, we get tougher The plates of armor are more impenetrable. It's harder to find those vulnerability chinks, but they're still there. And you know what it feels like when somebody slips in and gets you in your vulnerability. And you can, you know, then you go into that shame response. That's one side of vulnerability. But the other side is a side where you let yourself be seen by people that have earned the right to see it, to see you by people who will hold you with empathy, compassion, gentleness, not reinforce your story and say, oh, poor baby, and not say, oh, tough it up, grow up already, but will sit and hear you and let you be yourself and let you explore what's there for you. That's the kind of vulnerability that we'll open into on the longer workshop. And that's the kind of vulnerability that bridges from shame to joy. And then the last word that I've got down here is courage, because, oh my goodness, does it take courage to go into that kind of vulnerability? I know firsthand, I'm still very much in the practice of it. I can still feel myself, you know, last week I was in a big, I I went through a big shame contraction and, and sat and talked with someone who's very much earned the right to hear my vulnerability. And it was still hard for me to open up and speak my truth, even though I have practiced with this person again and again and have been received well again and again. It's still hard. It still takes courage. And the more you can cultivate gratitude and sufficiency, the easier it is to find that courage, the easier it is to find the vulnerability. So the four of these all support one another, and they weave together to make this bridge from shame to joy. So here's some more words about these. The practice of gratitude. It's a practice. It's not just an attitude of gratitude. It's a practice. Some of the ways to practice it, because 
I, whether you come to any other work that I ever do, I want you to leave here with some practical skills today. Mindfulness. Notice what's actually happening. Just take a moment and pause and notice what's true in this moment in your life right now. And I'll say that one thing that's true, this can go into the appreciation, is that you have the resources, the affluence, the safety in your life, the resources, again, the resources, to sit down and take an hour to talk about shame and vulnerability and scarcity and joy, to look at these things and to sit in a community together. You, you are amazingly blessed to have that discretionary time and income and resources and to know about work like this in the world. I'm not trying to say, oh my gosh, Cassandra is so amazing, although if you want to say that, that would be fine too. But I'm trying to say you in your life right now have the resources to take advantage of this. That is something to be aware of and to offer appreciation for. So appreciation, give thanks for the wonderful things in your life. Also give thanks for the things that don't suck. I was recently on a retreat and uh, was fasting for a fairly long period of time and noticed that while I could feel hungry in my body, I also had the awareness that I could get food if I wanted to. The people around me were well fed in the immediate, you know, couple of miles around me kind of thing. The people I knew of were well fed. There was no war, no famine, no fighting going on. I was safe. Many people that are chronically hungry in our world are not in safe environments at all. That's why they're hungry. There's something else going on. War, abuse, famine. Um, and then just to know that all I was was hungry, but I could change it. Like, that really helped me give appreciation for things that don't suck. I'm not in war right now. I have a home. And then speak your gratitude. Just feeling it yourself is a good step. To say it out loud is so powerful. It sends echoes out into the world. We call them karmic echoes. Um, you speak your gratitude to someone else, it makes the gratitude more real. And I think it helps you notice your brain on some level, maybe it sends the energy out to the universe that says, you notice gratitude. You're increasing that energy in your life. You'd like more of it. So as you speak your gratitude, more of it returns to you. So tell your friends, children, coworkers, spouse, and the people at the grocery store what you appreciate about them. Sufficiency. To me, this sums up as I am enough. Partially because one of my big, you know, parts that holds a lot of shame for me is the part that says I'm not good enough. And we'll talk about that one in the next webinar. But I am enough. I have enough time to rest when I'm tired. I make enough money to invest in my values. I feel enough safety to open my heart and tell you I love you. Practice sufficiency. Enough enough in the way that you want to act. Brene Brown talks about ordinary courage, and I love that phrase. Or to go off and wrestle a lion or go to war or plane, even if you have a parachute. It's not that kind of courage. It's not the momentous courage. It's ordinary courage, the kind of thing that you do day after day. Sharing your stories, allowing yourself to be. Vulnerability. Well, for me at this moment in time, vulnerability looks like that picture right now. Your Joy's Facebook page, and it's the one that has the week conversation and workshop that's starting soon. Looks like being really real, speaking your heart, speaking your truth, allowing yourself to be seen, and reaching out. Vulnerability is absolutely essential to living your purpose, to making a difference in the world. So, you might be thinking, this is amazing. How do I continue? You 
might not be. But I love thinking that you would be, so I put it on the slide. This is amazing. How do I continue? I've mentioned it a couple of times. There's the Shame, Vulnerability, Scarcity, and Joy workshop series. The first one is on relationships. It starts September 25th. Originally, I had it as um, just a morning this, this time of day, 11 a.m. Central. I've added an evening session. It's on the same day, so hopefully Thursdays are good for you. But it's at 6 p.m. Central. So for people who uh, are at work during the day, hopefully this will make it a little bit easier. But shame, vulnerability, scarcity, and joy, relationships. Sometimes we hear the word relationships and we just immediately think love or sex or partnership in that kind of way. Relationships are broader than that. This is the relationship. We will take uh, different weeks to look at different relationships, parent-child relationship. Some of that will be about if you are a parent with your child, but all of us were children. All of us had parents. So the parent-child relationship, self-care, um, business, coworkers, clients, so the business aspect of ourselves. We will look at love, relationships, sexuality, those kind of relationships. We'll look at friends and community. And the way that that workshop will be structured is that we have 12 weeks, six of those weeks. So every other week, we'll look at one of those um, aspects of relationship. And I will give some theory. We'll do a demonstration about it. Then I will partner you up with someone in the class. And you will have two weeks to do a partner homework exercise where you work one-on-one -on -one with one other person in the class doing an exercise that will show vulnerability, courage, gratitude, sufficiency. You'll get to strengthen all of those muscles in real-time practice with one other person from the workshop. And then, so that's six of the weeks. That's every other week. And then um, one of the weeks of the month is live hot seat coaching. So you will let me know ahead of time if you'd like some coaching, what kind of topic, what, what kinds of things you're working on. And I will work with between like one and five people um, during the course of the call and do live coaching with you where the others can listen. We often have work that overlaps and resonates with one another. So by listening to someone else do their work, you often will learn a lot, get a lot of insight in yourself and learn more about these things, sufficiency, vulnerability, courage. And then the last week of the month, we will do stories. It'll be sharing of your stories. You can share your shame stories, your joy stories, your challenges, your questions, your insights, really cool things that happen to you, really hard things that are happening. It's a time for your voice to be heard. Again, I said that um, shame happens between people. Most of the time, shame happens in relationship to someone else. It also heals in relationship to someone else. By speaking our stories, we get to exercise those vulnerability and courage muscles, and it feels good. There is freedom there. So you can register for, those, for that workshop at Year of Joys. I don't have a link right here for you to register because I would like you to go take a look at not only can you do shame, vulnerability, scarcity, and joy relationships, which is the 12 week class coming up. But in January, there's one on stereotypes and body image and cultural messages. And that's gonna be a 10 week one that starts in January. And then there's a nine week one that starts in March that is around our relationship as human beings to the planet. We live in a time where we're hearing a lot about environmental degradation, social injustice, political upheaval, economic instability, what does it mean to be a human being who can live with vulnerability and courage in the midst of all of those messages? Um, and so this is my invitation to you to step into perhaps just that one workshop, just the 12 week one, but to consider stepping into the longer journey together to come in and do the longer journey. And You'll find if you go to the website that the pricing is different. If you just do one work, $7. But if you do all three of them together, I think it's $750. I should probably go and check my prices so I know that. But there are two more options that you can do absolutely for free. And that's Sufficiency and Gratitude, a webinar like this on the 18th next Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. Same time, same place, slightly different subject. 
And then on the evening of that same day, so this is to practice that evening time slot and see if anyone's interested in that, we have vulnerability and courage, uh-oh, with a spelling error and it's vulnerability. There should be an N in there, vulnerability and courage at 6 p.m. Central. Um, and you can register for those through my website. Again, um, it'd be lovely to have you there as well. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of question and answer. If anybody's got some questions, I will go ahead and close that. And maybe I'll turn my camera on just for those of you who don't know me. You could actually get to see me here. And while I do that, we'll go back into question All and answer. All attendees mode. are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. Great. And then, so here I am. We played with the lighting yesterday. It's probably it's a little bit out again. Hello, everyone. If anybody has a question, go ahead and do star six or type it into that little box on the side. And it would be lovely to hear from you. And if there aren't any questions, then we might just go ahead over to the drawing. And I think, I think the lighting and whatnot. Yeah, go ahead. This, this is Eleanor. Hi, I'm Eleanor. just wondering how long will each session be? So the free sessions are about an hour. That's what we're doing today. And then for the workshop class, I've got an hour and a half of time scheduled. They may not, they will probably go somewhere between 75 and 90 minutes most of the time is my guess. And are there audios available to download after each one? Yes. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, yep. All of this will be recorded um, live, you know, there'll be the live, you can show up. And actually, that's a really great, great question, Eleanor, because if somebody, if you're going on vacation or you know you've got appointments and you can make some of those but not all of them, you want to know that you can, can catch up on it afterwards. So theoretically, you could even do the entire class not being able to be live on any of the calls, and you could still do the partner work and get the live connection that way. So you could just listen to um, all of the all of the workshop recordings and then do the live partner coaching. I don't think that's ideal, mostly because I would love you to be able to do some of the live hot seat coaching and I would love you to be able to share some of your stories. Okay, any other questions? Cassandra? Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep, I can hear you. It's Patricia, how are you? Hi Patricia, great um, to hear your voice. Yeah, um, I was wondering um, if this one today and, and next Wednesday, you're going to have those up for a while, so because I'm only on my phone at work, I have no computer yeah. to go to. Yeah, so, I will absolutely. All of you that came to the workshop today will be able to access the recording, and I think even people that weren't here will be able to access it. I have to figure out the technology a little bit, but yeah, on the computer. So I'll see your flags and. Mhm. Mm okay. All right. So on the phone, you can't put in for the drawing, huh? you got to be on the computer. Right? No, you totally can. Um, and it, it could just be that you let me know that you want to be in the drawing. And do you happen to remember anything that you were excited about? Oh, I like the oils. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the essential oils. And, Actually, uh, it all sounded like fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think there were a lot of cool things in there. Um, well, there are two essential oil uh, sessions that we're having drawings for, so maybe I'll just put you in half and half for each of those. All right. Well, so, so it, the only thing is, though, that it's 12:44, and I have a minute to go back to work. <laughs> That's fine. You can go back to work. I'll count you as being here if your name comes up. Great. Oh, that's great. Well, you know what? You did a great job. You know, well, thank I, you. I, didn't, I, I didn't really know what um what to expect, but I thought that was awesome. You pulled out some points that were like, huh, huh, hey. <laughs> I like that. So, you're great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thanks for speaking up. I know you're, you're going back to work, but thanks for, for sharing your voice. 
Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll talk to you later then. Okay. Great. Bye bye. Bye. And I've got a typed in question here. It says, hopefully this is not off topic, but I'm curious about your necklace. I noticed on the Facebook page cover photo too. Yeah, my necklace was given to me by a dear friend who is helping me with this work immensely, um, helping with the shame and the vulnerability and the courage and learning how to show up and what that looks like. And um, he went to Burning Man and came back with this pendant. Um, he was part of building the temple there and came back with it and, and gave it to me. And I've been wearing it ever since. I put it on a piece of yarn and I don't take it off. And at some point in time, it will fall off, and I'll have to figure out what to do then. So is there anybody else who didn't fill out the survey for free stuff? Feel free to type it in on the side or just speak up and let me know. Okay, then what I hope to do for the next calls is to have is to have someone else help me out here with doing um, the free drawing. It's not hard technology, but it's a little much to multitask. So I'm actually just going to put you all on discussion mode, see if you wanna to talk to each other at all. If you don't, it'll just be quiet for a minute, but I'm gonna go do the drawing. I'm gonna turn off my, uh, hello, meeting options. wonder why it won't let me go over there. All attendees are muted. All attendees are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. Okay, well, here's another random thing about the platform. I have no idea why it would not let me put everybody in discussion mode. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera so that I can just sit here and type and not look at y'all. And then... I'm going to go do the drawing and I will come back. Sort of like maybe I could put in a little music, but <clears throat> you know, go go check your Facebook pages for a minute. Go look at my most recent post if you like. But it'll take me probably four or five minutes here.
Okay, so thank you for your patience. Again, next week there shouldn't need to be a break for me to do that because um, someone else will help me out with it. So I feel like I should have a good like, drum roll here. Um, I have in no particular order of, of prizes. Um, and I used a random number generator kind of thing. So we'll see. Um, it, it seems like the answers came out pretty nicely. For the free website upgrade. So this is worth $750. It's from friends and clients of mine, Danae and Todd, over at 604website.com. And Danae has been a complete blessing in helping me get yearofjoys.com and the Facebook page. She's helping consult with me on that and on some like marketing and social media kinds of things. And so I'm really delighted to offer this. So it's not a free website, but it's an upgrade. And I think it's really a great, um, a great free gift. And that came to Jessica. So Jessica Holst, you are the winner of the website upgrade. And then we have uh, the life coaching session with Carrie Smith Hardy. Carrie is also a wonderful person and she has actually coached me quite a bit. Um, and she's been in some of my other workshops before. So Carrie and I have gone back and forth. I've coached her, she's coached me, and I've really uh, loved the gentle and knowledgeable and intuitive approach that she brings. And Kathy Cunningham is the one who won that. Congratulations, Kathy. Um, we have the transition ceremony, the life transition ceremony with Margot Penny Hawk. And I think this is a great one. If I was putting myself in the drawing, this is one of the things that I would have gone for. Um, Margot wrote these books in, a in the Anessa series. So that's what they're called. It's Anessa's Gift, Anessa's Loss, Anessa's Love. And they are all about how to um, come from a very wholehearted place. It's a Brene Brown sort of word, wholehearted, but this coming with vulnerability and courage. There's a lot of that in these stories to really big points in our lives, like growing up in adolescence, the death of a loved one. Maybe that's a grandmother, maybe that's a peer. Um, and love and relationships, what happens when they don't turn out the way that we hope they will? And what happens when, how do we help create something really amazing? So this life transition ceremony, Nikki Abbott, you were the one who got that one. Congratulations, Nikki. Um, then we have an essential oil consultation and sample kit with Sarah Jones. And the essential oils, I mentioned a tiny bit at the beginning. I love the way they smell. They've been good for mood enhancement. Um, Nikki actually does some nice things with essential oils and air sprays and soaps and uh, lotion and, and neat things. So we have someone on our call right, right now who's good with essential oils. But the consultation is with Sarah, who uses them uh, with her doula clients and with her parent coaching clients as well. The winner of that is Colleen, Colleen Nikeska. And then on to the VIP coaching session with Goddess Allison on um, soulmate matchmaking or abundance consciousness. And um, I have known Allison by a, a nickname for a while, and I'm delighted to see her launching off into a, a business venture that is so much in line with her personality and her heart's calling. And so I love seeing her manifest this purpose-driven work in the world. And the winner of that drawing went to Tosca. Congratulations, Tosca. We have another essential oil consultation and sample kit, this one with Lisa Rose. And that went to Patricia, who was just on the call and dropped off, but I said she could stay on for a little bit, or that she could get something from the drawing because she was here. Um, we have the shamanic journey with Danielle Williams. And I could talk for quite a while about shamanic journeys with Danielle, but we're getting close to our time, so I won't. But I will just say that I did a journey with her in June of 2012, so it's more than two years ago now, that is still uh, impacting and guiding some of my work and who I'm growing up into as a person. And it's very related to this shame and vulnerability and particularly vulnerability, letting myself be seen and show up and be myself. And so a shamanic journey for me isn't like a coaching session where you might do it every week or so. It's, it's this really awesome gift 
to give oneself that you then touch back in on for months or even years. And that went to Eleanor. Congratulations, Eleanor. The one thing that we have left um, is the free ticket to the shame, vulnerability, scarcity, and joy. Uh, the and I was delighted to see that several of you were interested in that. I'm so glad you are, and there'll be that drawing will be in the subsequent free webinars as well. But today, the um, winner of that is Erica. Congratulations, Erica. So. Thank you all who stepped in, filled out that little survey. Um, I will go ahead and email you and let you know that you won. And um, I've heard from all of you so far on the call in some way or another. So I'm pretty sure that you're all here. And yeah, we'll, we'll smooth the drawings out in future weeks. But there are two more free webinars and more chances to win. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and again take us off of listen-only mode. Maybe. All attendees are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. All right. So anybody want to say anything to end with? I want to say thank you all so much for coming and I would love to hear from, so, okay, we'll do it this way. We are out of time right now, and I want to go ahead and respect the, the time boundaries. And if you've got anything that you would like to share, you liked something, you'd like to see something different, you think your free gift is kind of awesome, please go to the Facebook page, Facebook slash Year of Joys, and um, let me know. Say something. Help that conversation go a little bit uh a little bit more vibrantly. It's mostly my voice that's been on that page so far. So I'd love to have more people's voices. Thank you all so much. And thank you for the nice comments. We'll go ahead and wrap up the recording and just send you off with big blessings and big smiles. Bye. <laughs>